Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this is um, another lecture on similarity. In this case, I will talk about polygons. Um, the last one was about triangles. It's a special case of polygons. Now I will try to expand it to some other cases. Um, so um, let me just talk about um, general properties of similarity of polygons. Um, first of all, if polygon has n sides or n angles, um, after the transformation of scaling, um, homotity, a scientific term, um, obviously it will be transformed into another polygon, and that other polygon will have also n vertices and angles and n sides. Why? Well, for obvious reasons that the straight line is transformed into straight line, which means segment is transformed into segment, point into point, angle, as you remember, into another angle, which is, by the way, equal to original one, as we were proving, uh, we have proved it before. So the number of vertices cannot be changed, straight lines will remain straight, so sides will be sides, and angles will be angles after the transformation. So this is the first property. The n-sided polygon is transformed into n-sided polygon. You cannot scale a triangle into a square. Now, um, the second property is, what if you have an n-sided regular polygon? Now, regular polygon, as you remember, is the one which has all uh, interior angles equal to each other and all sides uh, equal to each other. Um, I'm interchangeably uh, uh, using equal and congruent, basically. Uh, it, it means exactly the same thing in this particular case. Um, so, how can we prove that regular n-sided polygon is transformed into regular one? Well, again, uh, we were already mentioned that um, the angles are transformed into uh, angles of equal size. All sides which used to be in, uh, equal to each other in lengths of the original polygon, let's say it's an equilateral triangle, will be transformed into another, uh, into sides of another triangle after scaling. And what's important, there is a factor of scaling. Each, seg uh, uh, each segment, each side in this particular case, will have its lengths equal to the old lengths multiplied by the same factor. So if these three lengths were the same, multiplied by the same factor, they will be the same. So angles uh, equal angles remain equal angles, and sides are proportionally um, uh, factored in the same factor, in, uh, uh, using the same coefficient of proportionality, which means that the final size, sizes will also be equal to each other. So that's why if it used to be regular, all angles are equal, all sides are equal, it will be a regular polygon after the transformation. The quality will be retained. Now, um, let's talk about different geometrical figures which we have already learned something about. For instance, uh, we were talking about right triangles. Now, is the quality of a triangle to be a right triangle retained after the transformation of scaling? Yes, of course, because the quality is that this angle is 90 degrees. Now, after the transformation of scaling, all angles are preserved, which means the resulting triangle will also have 90 degree uh, angle. So, the quality of a triangle to be the right triangle is preserved. 
Now, the quality of a triangle to be isosceles, when two sides are congruent to each other, equal in size, obviously will also be preserved because the final triangle will also have these sides uh, equal in length to each other because they are equal to old size and uh, old side size multiplied by the same factor. So if these were equal, multiplied by the same factor, these will be equal as well. So the isosceles triangles are transformed into isosceles. Now, obviously, equilateral into equilateral. That's basically part of what we, what we have already proven about um, n-sided right polygons. Um, what else? Parallelograms will be transformed into parallelograms because the quality of two lines to be parallel to each other uh, is retained by the uh, transformation of scaling. Because every line, after transformation of scaling, is transformed into line parallel to each other. So if I have two lines in a parallelogram, which are parallel to each other, the image will also be lines parallel to these. So parallelism is retained, which means parallelogram will be parallelogram after um, transformation. Rhombus will be rhombus because it's a, basically a combination of uh, being a parallelogram uh, and having all sides uh, equal to each other in lengths. And again, the length is transformed proportionally for all sides of a polygon, which means that the final, the resulting um, uh, figure will also have equal sides and will be a parallelogram, which means that it will be rhombus. Uh, square, obviously, will be converted into square. What else? Uh, rectangles, again, all uh, angles uh, are 90 degrees and angles are retained by um, the transformation of scaling. Uh, trapezoids, trapezoid is, uh, uh, trapezoid has two sides parallel to each other and the parallelism is retained as well. So all these different uh, qualities of different geometric figures which we were talking about before will be preserved by the transformation of scaling, by homotopy. Now, these are all kind of trivial facts about polygons. Now, um, just very, very um, slightly more difficult um, about regular polygons. I'm going to prove that two regular polygons, which have exactly the same number of vertices, uh, or angles or sides um, are always uh, uh, the, the, there is always a transformation of scaling which transforms one into another they are always similar okay how can we prove that let's say if I have two triangles for instance how to prove that they always are similar this is a particular case of this theorem and I would like actually to address it as, as an illustration that this is true. All equilateral triangles, which are n-sided regular polygons with n equals to 3, uh, are congruent to each other, uh, not congruent, sorry, similar to each other. Now, how can I prove it? Well, for triangles it's very simple, because these angles are always 60 degrees for equilateral triangles, and we know uh, a theorem about triangles, if two angles of one triangle are um, uh, congruent to two angles of another triangle, then they are similar. So in this case, obviously this is the case, so these two triangles, two equ equilateral triangles are similar. Now, how about squares? Squares are regular polygons of n-sided where n is equal to 4. So if you have this square and you have this square, how to prove that they are uh, congruent to each other? Well, in this also a particular case, I will use the following uh, technique. Let's have two diagonals here and two diagonals here. 
Now, I can use parallel shift and maybe rotation to basically position my triangle, my, my square, smaller square inside the bigger square in this way. Now, why is it possible? Well, if I will move this point to this point and this point to this point, everything else actually will be in place because if I will draw a line parallel to this and parallel to this and then parallel to this and parallel to this, I will have a square which can obviously very easily be proved and the square will have exactly the same diagonal as this one. Now, I don't want actually to prove it in, in details because I will, uh, I will be proving this in, in, in just general case for any number of, um, uh, of vertices of the uh, regular, uh, regular polygon. So, but you basically feel how, uh, how I would probably be able to prove it. Now, um, I will actually prove it for just general case, for n. Okay. Uh, instead of a square, let's use something else. Um, now, first of all, let's say you have some kind of regular, I'm not sure it's that regular, but let's consider it's regular hexagon. you kind of feel that there is a center of this figure, right? Which probably is center of symmetry, etc. Well, uh, let me prove it a little bit more rigorously. Forget about these three. I will draw three angle bisectors. So these two angles are equal to each other, and each one of them is half of the interior angle of hexagon. Now, these angles also are equal to each other because this is a bisector. And considering that this interior angle is equal to this interior angle, halves of these angles also are equal. So is this one. Now, how can I prove that three bisectors are intersecting in one line? Well, it's actually very easy. Let's just consider these two. Now, this is a triangle. And um, consider this side and these two angles. Now, let's draw a bisector here. And just, for example, it, it intersects in some other point, not in the same point. But if you will take a look at this, this triangle and this triangle are congruent to each other because sides in inside the regular polygon uh, are equal, congruent to each other, and all angles are exactly the same, and each one of them is half of the interior angle of uh, the polygon. And uh, so they are also equal to each other. So these two triangles must be congruent to each other. And that's why this particular segment must be equal to this. So because this is the side of this isosceles triangle, and this is uh, the side of this isosceles triangle, and sides are equal because triangles are congruent. So that's why it will, this bisector will intersect this in exactly the same point as this bisector will intersect this, because these triangles are congruent to each other. Obviously, as any other triangle, if we will put the angle bisector, so, I mean, obviously you feel that this is true, that if you will draw a bisector of every uh, interior angle of uh, regular inside sided polygon, all these bisectors will intersect in one, uh, at one point. Yes, but this is a, well, a little bit more rigorous proof rather than just, you know, you're you, you feeling about this. All right, fine. So we have something which we can call a center of the regular 
uh, n-sided polygon. And we will use this point to prove that any other, in this case, six-sided polygon, let's say this one, is similar to this one. Now, how am I going to prove it? Well, to prove that these two are similar to each other, I have to build um, a transformation which contains um, some congruent transformations, like parallel shift, rotation, um, reflection maybe, and scaling. And as a result of these transformations, I will transform this into this. All right, so first let's talk about um, congruent transformation, which will bring this particular uh, n-sided polygon inside this one, and in such a way that the center will be moved into the center. And any one of those angle bisectors will coincide with corresponding uh, bisector. Now, why would any other bisectors coincide with these? Well, for obvious reason that all these triangles are congruent to each other and have exactly the same angles. And if I will just draw a line from this parallel to this line, and then from this parallel to this, etc., 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 I will build a set of triangles. Each one of them is an isosceles triangle with a fixed angle at the base. This is the base, and these are two uh, equal sides. So with these two angles exactly equal to any of these angles for obvious reasons. So the whole um, n-sided regular polygon uh, inside the big um, polygon will be congruent to this one because of congruence of each triangle. Now, once I have built this particular uh, regular n-sided polygon and I know that vertices will lie on angle bisectors. Now all I have to do is to use a scaling with this as a center and the ratio between two bisectors, the big bisector and the small bisector, as, as a uh, factor of scaling. Since all the big bisectors are congruent to each other and all the small bisectors are also congruent to each other, the ratio will be exactly the same, which means every point, this as well as this, as well as this and this and this and this, by stretching by the same factor as ratio between these two guys, these also will be converted into the corresponding point on a big uh, uh, n-sided polygon. So this is basically uh, a construction, if you wish, of exact transformation which transforms one into another. As long as the number of sides or the, no the number of vertices is exactly the same, that's sufficient for them to be similar. And the proof is an actual construction of the scaling which will transform this into this. Okay. Now, uh, well, incidentally, this angle is equal to 360 divided by n, right? Because there are n triangles here. Now, these two angles in sum would be equal to 180 minus 360 divided by n. Because the total uh, measure of all three angles is 180 in this triangle. This one is 360 divided by n, so sum of these two is equal to 180 minus 360 divided by n. But don't forget that these two angles in sum would be exactly the same as interior angle, because each one of them is half 
these are bisectors. So this is actually the, uh, the measure of any interior uh, angle of n-sided regular polygon. But this is besides the point. It has nothing to do with similarity in this particular case. OK. Next. Next is um, a special theorem which I would like, would like actually to present as also a little bit less trivial. Um, well, the previous one was a little bit less trivial versus the theorems which I mentioned before that, uh, let's say, um, the right triangle will remain right after the scaling. I mean, that's obvious because the angles are uh, preserved. But the fact that two n-sided polygons, uh, regular polygons, are um, similar to each other, that's a little bit less trivial and required some, some, some proof. Now, in this case, this is also a little bit less trivial theorem. If you have two triangles, both right triangles, and you have a proportional quantity uh, 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 and uh, hypotenuses, which means that AB uh, ratio to A prime, B prime, one catechus versus another, is equal to BC versus B prime, C prime. So ratio between these two um, uh, catechus is the same as the ratio between hypotenuses. Then these two right triangles are similar to each other. Now, how can we prove it? Um, actually, it's um, basically the same as we have proved something about similarity of triangles in more general case when we have, let's say, two angles or um, an angle and two sides proportional to uh, each other. So what I will do is the same. I will find a point M such that AM is congruent to A prime, B prime, these two. And draw a parallel to a hypotenuse, MM. Now, uh, obviously, these two triangles are similar to each other. We have proved it uh, in uh, one of the previous lectures when I was talking about any triangle and a line parallel to one side, it cuts another triangle which is similar to, to the big one, to the original one. Now, since these two triangles are uh, similar to each other, their sides are proportional, which means AM divided by AB, or I can do it vice versa, it easy. AB divided by AM equals to BC divided by MM, right? B, uh, AB divided by AM, like BC to MM. This is what proportionality means. This is basically the direct uh, result of uh, them being similar. Now, but here, considering AM and A prime B prime are exactly the same, so I can put here AB A prime B prime. But at the same prime, at the same time, AB divided by A prime B prime is the same as BC over BC prime. BC over B prime C prime. Now, if you consider these two, you have numerators the same, and that's why we have um, the uh, denominators the same. So that's how we have proved that this is equal to this. Now, this was constructed as two congruent segments, right? So we have two 
uh, right triangles with uh, a catheters and hypotenuse correspondingly equal to catheters and hypotenuse, which means they are congruent. So these two triangles, A, M, N, and A prime, B prime, C prime, are congruent to each other. And since A, B, C is similar to A, M, N, therefore A, B, C is similar to A prime, B prime, C prime. That's it. That was easy. Okay. What's next? Now we have... Um, okay. Um, that's about a triangle. A uh, triangle has uh, a few major elements, like... It has median, it has altitude, and it has P, uh, angle bisector. Now, what I'm saying is the following. If two triangles are similar to each other, then all these elements are also similar to each other. Um, well, let's prove it. I mean, you know, we don't really just give the information or facts about things. We prove things. At least we're trying to do it as rigorously as possible, um, just as a training exercise. Well, let's do it one by one. So let's start with median, let's see. OK, so we have median. And we have another triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime, median, to M prime. How can we prove that if these two triangles, A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime, are similar, then the proportionality actually is retained, which means that the factor this one is, in this particular case, longer than this one, would be exactly the same as the factor between, let's say, AB and A prime B prime, or BC and B prime C prime, or AC and AC pre, uh, A prime C prime. So, let's say the factor between the sides is whatever, F. Let's say it's AB divided by a prime, B prime. Okay, that's the factor of scaling. Now, since AM is half of AC, similarly, A prime, M prime is half of A prime, C prime, we can definitely say that since this factor is the same, then this factor is the same. This is AC over A prime C prime. This is half of AC over half of A prime C prime. Halves can be reduced, right? But these halves means that this is equal to A prime M prime, sorry, A M over, over A prime M prime. So what we have just proven that halves um, uh, of uh, the sides are proportional to each other with the same coefficient of proportionality. But now let's consider A, B, M and A prime, B prime, M prime. Since they are similar, these angles are the same. And we have proven that the proportionality between a, we have just proven the proportionality between the sides. A, B uh, versus uh, ra uh, ratio to A prime, B prime is the same as A, M to A prime, M prime, which proves, according to one of the theorems about the similarity of triangles, we have a side, angle, side. 
sides are proportional with the same coefficient of proportionality, which is the factor, and angles are equal. So ABM is similar to A prime, uh, B prime, M prime. And what follows is proportionality with the same factor between BM and B prime, M prime. So medians are proportional to sides. Now, let's talk about bisectors. Let's consider BM is a bisector, which means this and these are halves of ABC. But these and these, these are also two halves of A prime, B prime, C prime. And since A prime, B prime, C prime, the big angle of the uh, uh, triangle itself is the same as, in, in this case, ABC, then halves are also the same. So that's why I use the same, uh, uh, the same sign to basically uh, to signify that these two angle actually or four angles are exactly the same of the same size, the same measure. Now, what do we have? We have A B M and A prime B prime M prime having two angles exactly congruent to each other. And again, one of the um, characteristics, one of the theorems about similarity of triangles was, if you remember, that if two angles of one triangle are correspondingly uh, congruent to two angles of another triangle, then these triangles are similar. That's why ABM and A prime B prime M prime are similar to each other, and the same BM is proportional to B prime M prime with the same factor, with the same ratio of proportionality as AB to AB prime, A, A prime B prime. Same ratio. What's left is uh, altitude. Okay, what about altitude? Basically, we really have to do um, exactly um, the same thing. We have to prove um, similarity of A, B, M and A prime, B prime, M prime. Right. How can we prove it? Well, very easily. Since this is the right triangle and this is the right triangle, these are altitudes, right? B M is an altitude, and B prime M prime is, uh, is an altitude. So we also have two angles congruent to each other. One because the triangles are similar, and another because they're both right angles. So these triangles A B M and A prime B prime M prime are similar in this case as well, which is why altitudes are proportional to the sides. So again. In, um, uh, in, in, in two similar triangles, these elements like bisector, um, median, and, uh, and, and height, they are all proportional with the same uh, ratio of proportionality as the sides. Um, actually, it's true for um, other elements as well. For instance, radius of inscribed circle or radius of, uh, of circumscribed circle. But I would rather put it as a as a problem for some some uh, next lecture or something like this. I, I just want you to have a feeling that if two figures are similar, then every reasonably constructed element inside one would be proportional to uh, element. Uh, corresponding element of another. Now, reasonably, I mean, like bisector of the same angle uh, or radius of circumscribed uh, circle and, and stuff like this. Okay. And I think I wanted to have one more theorem as part of this. Yes, perimeters. Perimeter of uh, 
of similar polygons, not necessarily regular polygons, just similar. So if you have two similar polygons, let's say you have one trapezoid and another trapezoid, and let's say they are similar, then their perimeters are similar as well. Why? Well, this is the simple thing. Let's call the lengths of these A, B, C, and D, and this will be A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. These are lengths of the corresponding um, sides. Now, we know that the sides are proportional to each other, right? So the coefficient of proportionality between all of them is exactly the same. So A divided by A prime is equal to B divided by B prime divided by C, C prime, D, D prime, and equals to some kind of a factor of uh, scaling F. Now, the perimeter of the left one is A plus B plus C plus D. Perimeter of the second one is A prime plus B prime plus C prime plus D prime. Now, A is equal to A prime times F, right? B is equal to B is equal to B prime times F. So is C prime times F and D prime times F, which is equal to factor out F, factor out the factor, <laughs> and what will be inside the parentheses, A prime plus B prime plus C prime plus D prime, which is a perimeter of this triangle. So the perimeters are related to each other in exactly the same fashion as the sides, also proportional with the same coefficient of proportionality. And that would be it for today. Um, Next lecture will be about circles. Don't forget the unizor.com website contains this material, this lecture, and many other lectures. I do encourage parents to take a look at the site because parents can control the educational process of their um, children, as well as group teachers, for instance. They can control in, on an individual basis um, the pace of learning uh, of each student, because each one could just do it you know, at, at, at his or her own uh, pace, going through exams, lectures, exams, etc. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, until the next time.